Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our i2 logging software, doing an overview of what to expect as we're starting to get inter introduced into that type of logging software environment. So we'll find that the M1 tune is going to be where we do all of our calibrating and tuning. We know we can use our time plot to be able to navigate and look at data. The i2 logging software is going to be a separate software we've already downloaded from the beginning of our training course that we'll use for data analysis purposes to review our data that we're downloading off of our M1 with the onboard logging. So you can think of this, you come into the pits from you know, doing a couple laps, you want to be able to review your data from your vehicle. You're going to be able to go in, pull off the onboard log, then you'll open up that data log file in the i2 logging software and be able to review what's going on. So it's important that we understand how to use it. We will be digging in later in the training tutorials here, uh, much later in the training course, how to deal with some data analysis, looking through some data logs and actually getting some, uh, some hands-on use with the i2 logging software. But again, right now, this is just going to be introducing the software and doing the overview. So the first thing I want to do here is actually open up the i2 software. Now there's two different versions of the i2 software available. There's an i2 standard, which is what we downloaded in the beginning of the training course, and there's an i2 Pro, which is a paid version from MoTeC. And it's useful if you're doing a lot of data analysis. Um, in most cases, the i2 standard software is sufficient. Um, so that's what I'm going to show and work with here for all of the training course and the training modules. Let's jump down here. I have the actual icon right down here on my lower toolbar. I can go ahead and click on this and now it opens up that software. Now we have some options here. We can choose a workspace to get started. These workspaces are structured around specific tasks. So circuit workspace, drag, rally, M1 workspace, engine workspace. Now any of these will actually work with the M1. Let's just go ahead and choose this M1 and grab this right here. Now when we open this up, we can find first thing that everything is going to be blank. So we can see here there's a couple different tabs we can click through. There can be label, so general, fuel and ignition, mixture map, RPM histogram, drive-by-wire, spare one, spare two. So these are pre-populated and configured in a lot of these cases for us to open up a data log and start to take a look at some general information. Now we can customize this and actually go ahead and change some things up here and I'll walk you through how to actually do that um, in a little bit. So first thing, let's go ahead and download an onboard log from our M1 and bring that into the software here. So if I go up to the top, this little green arrow icon, we can say get logged data. Now when we do this, what's going to happen here is you see there should be a window popping up. What I've noticed with this particular software is that sometimes I have to click back into the M1 software. And now it's going to see the little window that should be popping up on the screen for whatever reason it doesn't on my laptop. Uh, we'll go here to the recent ECU. So we're going to point it towards that's where we want to download the onboard log source from. Let's go ahead and click OK. And then we have in my case, I have level three logging enabled on my M150. So I do have eight different systems that I can pull data from within the data logging structuring. Now I'm only logging on my system one. If you have level one or level two logging, you only have your system one here available. So level three unlocks eight different subsystems, so to speak, where we can have various different channels and uh, sampling rates for all kinds of logging structures. So this could be different users coming into your box and being able to download specific specific information that's needed. So in case this uh, in this case, I'm going to have my my data logging system one. I'll click next here, and then it's going to ask me, do I want to erase all of the log from the M1? So I don't want to erase this on uh, erase this off the onboard logging memory. I'm going to say yes. That's fine. I'll get rid of it because it's going to automatically save it into a logged folder on my. Uh, my computer here. So let's go to next. And I can put a short comment here. Um, in this case, I was just doing some basic testing. So we can just say um, basic engine rev. And then I could give us some more information here. So I could say testing drive by wire uh, functionality. And again, I could put more information here. Uh, the driver, I could go ahead and fill in information in venue event session. This gives me the ability to have some essentially some details here that associated with the data log. So when I'm going in and trying to open up the data log, I know what, what the log file is going to contain. Uh, this is very useful. For right now, I'm just going to skip over it, but definitely want to fill this in to be able to keep track of what your logs are going to be associated with. Let's go ahead and click Next. Now it went through the, the download process. It was very quick. If you have a longer log, it could take a few minutes for it to download. Now this is a step that I don't suggest you skip. 
It's going to say, do you want to convert the log data image? Asking me if I want to do it now or I'll do it later. I want to go ahead and convert it so that I'm able to open it up in the i2 logging software. So if we don't do the conversion, there's a way we can manually convert it later. I always like to do this right off the bat here. So yes, continue with conversion. It's going to do the conversion here. Let's click start. Shouldn't take very long. The file was pretty short right here. So now we have our file and we're going to go in here and say open in i2. Now we could also say use an i2 pro. That would only be if I have that paid version of the software. So we're just going to open in the standard version of i2. Now when we do this, we can jump back in here to our i2 logging software. And what we're going to find here is that we start to see some information that's populated. So what we can see here is we kind of pop into each individual page is different things plotted here graphically. This first general page is taking a look at some general information. We can see the channels in our time plot here, engine speed, inlet air temp, coolant temp. Notice that engine oil temperature here is, is in white here, but there's nothing actually being plotted or presented because the channel doesn't exist in my onboard logging channels. So we are able to have the information displayed here if engine oil temp was actually collect it in the data log, but in this case the channel is emitted, so we see it's just going to be white and blank. Engine oil pressure, fuel pressure, we're seeing the same thing. We might be using those, but we're finding we're not logging them. Also we see our battery voltage, what the charging volts at. Going here to the next window, this is fuel and ignition timing. So this is taking a look at some specific task of looking at engine speed, throttle position, inlet manifold pressure, fuel pressure, ejector duty cycle. We see our two lambda sensor readings, and then we see ignition timing down here. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.